This is what basketball looked like a century ago. And here's what it looks like now. So, how did we get here? Well, it all started when a teacher named James Naismith wanted to make a fun game for his students. And boom, just like that, we got basketball. But at first, the game was complete garbage. I mean, they played with soccer balls and used wooden baskets as hoops. Yeah, it was literally basketball. And they couldn't even dribble. But the game quickly evolved. And by 1906, metal rims were introduced. They finally allowed dribbling, thank God. And the very first professional basketball league was formed, the NBL. But 12 years later, another league was created, called the BAA, creating teams like the Celtics, the Lakers, the Knicks, and the Warriors. And by 1949, basketball was getting so popular that the BAA and the NBL were like, let's do it. So they merged, creating the NBA. But despite being the number one basketball league in the world, most players in the NBA still had day jobs, like Norman Glick, who worked as a plumber. I'm not kidding. But in 1956, one of the greatest players of all time made his NBA debut, Celtics legend. Bill Russell. I mean, he was so good that he won a championship in his first season and 10 more throughout his career. Yeah, 11 championships. The Celtics dominated the league for 13 years straight, but in 1959, Bill's biggest rival joined the league, Wilt Chamberlain, a man who could bench 500 pounds, sleep with 20,000 women, and score 100 points in a single game, a record he still holds to this day. Uh, by the way, None of those things were ever recorded on camera, so there's a bit of debate on whether any of it happened. The next 20 years were a dark era for the NBA. In fact, it was almost the death of it. In 1967, a rival league was formed called the ABA, creating teams like the Spurs, Nuggets, Nets, and Pacers. Two different leagues with over 200 players completely splitting the basketball fan base. Not only that, but 70% of NBA players were addicted to drugs, which was a big no-no. And by 1978, the NBA was down so bad, even most of the finals weren't aired on TV. Nobody cared about the NBA. But right before officially going bankrupt, the league was saved by two unlikely stars. This is Larry Bird and Magic Johnson. And in 1978, they were the two greatest players in college basketball history that just so happened to be playing at the exact same time, leading to one of the greatest rivalries ever. They talked smack, got physical, all while dropping 20 points on each other. It became the hottest thing on TV. I'm talking 40 million viewers for a single college game. Between 1978 and 1979, Bird and Magic officially declared for the league, with Bird going to the Boston Celtics and Magic to the Lakers. Meanwhile, the NBA absorbed the four remaining ABA teams, making the NBA the only professional basketball league. And oh yeah, in 1979, they finally added the iconic three-point line. The NBA was suddenly bigger than ever. Hell, uh, the league even started selling players' jerseys for the first time. And it was all led by Bird and Magic. But despite all that, the NBA had no clue what was about to hit them. Because there was a kid from North Carolina about to change not only basketball, but the world forever. In 1982, a 19-year-old college player was averaging 13 points and 4 rebounds. Nothing special, but it was enough to help bring his team, the North Carolina Tar Heels, to the NCAA championship. And it was during that game that he made a name for himself. Because in the final seconds, with his team down one, he did this. 18. Michael Jordan was ready to take over the basketball world. And in 1984, when Jordan was drafted by the Chicago Bulls, he instantly became a star, winning Rookie of the Year and looking like he'd be the face of the game for years to come. But at the start of his sophomore season, Jordan shattered his foot. Meanwhile, there was another player coming out of college, ready to take MJ's spot. This is Len Bias. And the kid was so good, scouts were saying he'd for sure be better than MJ. He was bigger, stronger, and a better rebounder. And in 1986, he was drafted by the Boston Celtics, a team that still had legends like Larry Bird, Bill Walton, and Danny Ainge. But just two days later, the NBA was hit with one of their worst tragedies. Local success story took a tragic turn this morning. Len Bias, the Maryland University basketball star, on his way to becoming a world champion Boston Celtic 
died of an apparent heart attack today at Leland Memorial Hospital in Prince George's County. He died of heart failure because he used cocaine. The medical examiner said the cocaine in Bias's body was virtually pure, while most found in Maryland is 60% diluted. He said Bias inhaled the powder. Within seconds, it was absorbed into the blood and quickly interrupted the electrical activity in his brain, and that produced an irregular heartbeat. Len Bias tragically passed away, and with that, brought an end to the Celtics dynasty. But there was another dynasty right around the corner. Now, a few months later, Michael Jordan returned from injury and literally became the most famous person in the world. He won three championships in a row with the Bulls, released the most iconic shoes of all time, the Jordan 1s, and he was so famous, you could recognize an outline of him. Everyone wanted to be like Mike, and it brought worldwide attention. By 1992, the NBA started playing games in countries like China, Germany, and Russia. And for the first time ever, you had legends like Bird, Magic, and Jordan all playing for the USA Olympic team, forming the Dream Team, aka the greatest sports team ever assembled. At this point, basketball and the NBA was at its peak. It was so big, the league even added two teams to Canada, but it was all short-lived. Last night, we began the show with the disappearance of Michael Jordan's father. Right? The worst fears have come true. James Jordan was found dead victim of an apparent murder. Jordan was devastated, and being unable to cope with the pain, he officially retired from the NBA in 1993. This left a massive hole in the league, and the Houston Rockets tried to fill it, even winning back-to-back -back championships. But it just wasn't MJ. So only two years after retiring, MJ shocked the world with two of the most iconic words in NBA history. I'm back. But when Jordan returned, he would meet the Black Mamba for the first time. And that's only one of the eight sections coming up after a word from our sponsor, Morgan & Morgan. See, when you're as good at basketball as I am, you become a target on the court. So after I dropped my 69th point in the game, this dude that was guarding me got mad blindsided me and broke my ankle, and I didn't know what to do. I couldn't afford the cost of fixing my broken ankle. But after doing some digging, I found something that saved my life, an injury law firm that'll fight your case for completely free, unless you win. Yeah, Morgan & Morgan will fight to give you the best results. So if you ever have an injury, you can go to ForThePeople.com, sign up for a free case evaluation to get started. Trust me, dog, you won't regret it. But look, we gotta get back to MJ, cause with the words, I'm back, he made his return to the NBA, where he and the Bulls went on to dominate the league again, winning three more championships in a row including one on Father's Day, where MJ dedicated the win to his dad. It was truly beautiful. But as Jordan's career came to an end, a new era of players were ready to take over. Players like Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal, and Allen Iverson. They all brought something the league had never seen before. AI redefined how you could dribble and move with the ball. Kobe brought his Mamba mentality, while no one could contain Shaq's size. But the changes went beyond just the court. By the early 2000s, you saw more players with tattoos, they were wearing chains and jewelry. The league had gotten a complete makeover. By the year 2003, Shaq and Kobe were dominating the league. They teamed up on the Lakers, and it won three championships in a row. It was a thing of beauty. That was, until their relationship fell apart. Kobe thought Shaq was being a lazy fat ass, and Shaq thought Kobe was mean. So the two ended up hating each other. But all eyes were on a much bigger story. See, there was a player in high school that was more famous than any NBA player. A player that was part Magic Johnson part MJ, and part superhuman. I'm talking about LeBron James, the most exciting prospect basketball had ever seen. I mean, if the league accepted high schoolers, he would have been playing in the NBA at 16. He was that good. And in the 2003 draft, he was selected by his hometown team, the Cleveland Cavaliers, ready to claim his crown as the king of the NBA. But while everyone had their eyes on LeBron, something sinister was going on in the background. A referee by the name of Tim Donahue was rigging games for the Mafia, telling them which teams to put money on. And it wasn't just a single game or even one series. He was rigging games for four years straight. Tim was literally changing the history of the NBA with each game he refed. But eventually, the FBI got involved. A two-year investigation was conducted, and Tim went to jail for 11 months. But the 2000s weren't all bad. 
In 07, the league saw the beginning of the Super Team era, and the Boston Celtics, made up of three NBA legends, Ray Allen, Kevin Garnett, and Paul Pierce. And I know there were other Super Teams over the years, the 82 Sixers, the 96 Bulls, hell, even the 2003 Lakers. But for the first time in NBA history, teams were intentionally trading for three superstars to try and win it all. And in 2010, the Miami Heat pulled off the greatest super team the NBA had ever seen, Chris Bosh, Dwayne Wade, and LeBron. I mean, they were so good, they made it all the way to the finals in their first year. By 2011, the league had hit one of his lowest points, going into a complete lockout. Basically, team owners wanted to pay their players less. Players said hell no, and the NBA shut down. So with nothing to do all day, stars like LeBron and KD went and dominated in local gyms. Some players like J.R. Smith went overseas to play, while others were forced to literally find a normal job. No one knew if this was the end of the NBA. But finally, after 161 days, everyone came to a new agreement, and this marked the beginning of the absolutely ridiculous NBA contracts we see today. I mean, uh, dudes like Timothy Mozgov, who averaged 6 points a game, signed a $65 million contract while stars like Kevin Durant were signing contracts for over $160 million. To put that into perspective, the most Bill Russell got paid at the height of his career was hundred grand per year. That is only $975,000 in today's money. With the NBA finally back, LeBron lived it up in Miami, going to four straight finals, winning two of them. Basketball was witnessing a new GOAT emerge, and the NBA was in the midst of its LeBron era. By 2014, LeBron returned to Cleveland, ready to win his hometown a ring, thinking it was going to be an endless flow of championships. But uh, there was a team in the Bay Area with a player named Steph Curry who was about to change the NBA forever. Steph Curry could shoot the ball from anywhere. And I mean anywhere. The league had never seen anything like it. Three point shots used to just be, you know, a normal part of the game. But now, we saw Steph Curry making it the number one option, from hitting more threes than any player in NBA history to taking home the MVP award that year and winning the 2015 NBA Finals. He broke boundaries and changed the way the league viewed shooting. So other teams started shooting threes like crazy, trying to find their own Steph Curry. But there was a problem. The dude was one of a kind, so from 2015 to 2018, it was the king of the league versus the greatest shooter of all time. And it made for some of the most memorable playoff series ever, playing like in 2016 when LeBron and the Cavs were down 3-1 to to the Warriors in the finals. But somehow they came back and won it all, making it LeBron's greatest accomplishment. Meanwhile, international players started invading the league, playing like Joel Embiid, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and Nikola Jokic who account for the last five MVPs from 2019 to 2023. Suddenly, the league's best players weren't even American. It was like nothing the league had ever seen before. But what nobody saw coming was a worldwide pandemic. A dangerous virus is spreading rapidly in China, and U.S. officials are very worried that it could come here. Now to growing concerns about the deadly coronavirus officially hitting the U.S. If I show up to an arena, ain't no fans in there. <laughs> I ain't playing. The NBA is suspending the season. See, the NBA was forced to completely shut down for four months. Luckily though, the league was trying to cook up a plan to bring basketball back, and what they came up with seemed insane at first, cause the NBA invited teams to Disney World, where they would come and play out the rest of the season while being stuck inside a bubble for three months. They couldn't leave, they couldn't bring anyone in, they couldn't even order food from outside restaurants. It was rough. But LeBron got his fourth ring out of it, and nobody got sick. By 2021, COVID was still around, but the fans were back, and we got to see one of the weirdest seasons ever. The Nets lost in the playoffs because KD's foot was too big, LeBron got eliminated in the first round for the first time in his career, and the Bucks won their first championship since 1971. In the 2022-23 season, we got to see a legendary Celtics vs Warriors finals, where Steph took home his fourth ring. But I think it's more important to talk about where we are today. See, I feel like there's a problem. 
that no one seems to be mentioning. The NBA's most popular players are getting really old, and uh, I think we're about to witness the end of an era. I mean, the typical retirement age for an NBA player is 35. Meanwhile, Jimmy Butler, James Harden, D. Rose, and Westbrook are all 34. Steph and KD are 35, CP3 is 38, and the king of the NBA, LeBron James, is 38 years old too, which makes him the oldest player in the entire NBA. I mean, uh, are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? These dudes are about to retire, and the league is about to look a whole lot different very soon. Because with 30 teams at the moment, the league has plans to expand to 32 teams. And with how much the league's changed already, who knows what we could see in 20 more years. Like, there's already talks about a four-point lot, airless basketballs, and Toyota's developing a robot that might even play in the league. This really is the end of an era and the beginning of something new.